Good morning everyone, I give you a lovely warm welcome this morning. Um, well, today is 20, the end of our 21 days of prayer. This is the end of it, but I would like to say to you, I challenge you to continue. Get your card and start from the beginning again and work your way through it again. How about that for a challenge? I'm Big going to be doing it. Yeah. I'll be doing it. So just keep praying through because some of the things on the card are yeah. really good. So I think it would be great if we could do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we do want to encourage you uh, just to keep praying. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, right there at the bottom of your card, uh, Ephesians six eighteen says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Uh, and, and these are indeed times when we need to be staying alert uh, and just being uh, persistent yeah, in prayer, uh, we want we are desperate to see change uh, in people's lives uh, and in our city, That's right. uh, and it's going to take persistent prayer that does that. That's right. um, so <laughs> be encouraged uh, to keep praying. Um, so let, let's find out he, uh, what's happening uh, this week. Standing in your love, there's nowhere left to run. There's nowhere left to hide Deep is calling out The mystery of your heart Is captivating mine Looking out into the wonders of your freedom Jesus' love has set me free Right, here we go, you ready? You make me know Just to, to pick up on uh, just the connect groups, um, the connect groups uh, will probably resume uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we just wanted to take a few weeks um, just before we start the connect yeah. groups. So do look out uh, for information on that. So let me just come and we'll, we'll let me pray for you. Come, Father. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your presence. Father, we love your presence. And Lord, this morning I ask that you will come and you will fill every home up with your presence. Lord, that people would feel your presence surrounding them, that their homes would just be overflowing with your perfect love, Father. And that this morning, Father, you would speak to us, you would open our ears to hear your word, Father. And I ask this morning, as we hear your word, Father, I pray that you'll help us to be obedient to what you're asking us to do. Yeah. So Lord, we love you and we want to bless you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's uh, just prepare our hearts now and let's just enter into some worship.
Oh 
was beyond our unbelief. Lead us now to full surrender. Who lead us to our Would you lead us to? Uh, well, today uh, I'm going to be continuing uh, on, on in the series uh, that I introduced uh, last week uh, on the promises of God for our lives. Last week uh, I shared um, about the hope uh, that we can have uh, and the promises of God. Uh, I, I used Abraham as that illustration and God's promises to Abraham uh, and how God sealed that covenant and how God's promises uh, can never uh, be broken, that he will never break his promise. Um, and so that is why we can have hope in the promises of God. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking about living in the promises of God. Living in the promises of God. Uh, do you know today that God has a plan and a purpose uh, for your life. Uh, you may not even feel it, uh, but I want to tell you today that God has a plan uh, and a purpose for your life. God wants you and desires that you would have a full life uh, in him. We have uh, an enemy of our soul. Uh, we have an enemy who wants to disrupt um, God's plans and purposes uh, for our lives and he will do everything. He plans and strategizes uh, in ways of, of disrupting these plans. Uh, Jesus himself uh, tells us this in John 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 10, uh, where he says that the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give you life and life to the full. Or as a New Living Translation says, to give you a rich and satisfying life. How many of us would love a rich and satisfying life? Let me just say uh, that this is not a life that's free from trouble, that's free from problems, that's free from hardship. Uh, that is not the case because Jesus himself again says that we will have trouble. In this world, uh, you will have trouble. But take heart that he has overcome the world. Um, and I believe that we can still have a rich uh, and satisfying life in Christ, uh, even in the midst of uh, trouble uh, and trials and difficult circumstances. Uh, because God is the one that we can run to for protection, for peace, uh, just for comfort. Uh, and so, yes, and so God wants us uh, to have a rich and satisfying life, a full life. 
Uh, these messages that I'm speaking on um, were inspired uh, by a book uh, that I read uh, a few years ago uh, called Four Cups uh, by Pastor Chris Hodges, uh, where he uses uh, the promises that God made to Moses um, on how he would bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, you can read uh, the story there in Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. Uh, I would encourage you to read it um, at some point in the day or in the week. Uh, God hears the cry uh, of his people uh, from their slavery. Um, many years before, as God had promised to Abraham and, and others that God would bring them out of uh, that place of slavery. Uh, and so God tells Moses to say to the people uh, these uh, promises uh, from Exodus chapter 6. He tells them, tell the people of Israel that I will bring you out. I will bring you out. He tells them to say to them, I will free you, uh, that I will redeem you, that I will make you my own people. Uh, and then it says, then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And so God was going to bring his people out of slavery. He was going to deliver them. Uh, that he was going to redeem them uh, and make them his own. As I said uh, today, uh, I want to speak about living in the promises of God. Uh, we are all on a spiritual journey. Uh, there may be some people who have just started that journey. There may be some people who have been on this journey a long time. Um, and so we're all at different stages in our Christian life, in our walk, in our relationship with God. Uh, we all uh, have had our past. Uh, we have had our yesterdays um, and all the, the memories uh, of that. Um, good, bad, ugly, whatever. Um, but we have a past. Um, and I believe that even with the things that have happened in our past, they have shaped us um, and who we are. Uh, today, good and bad. Uh, we have our today, uh, where we are today in our life, where we are in our journey now. And we also have a future, uh, where we are headed, um, our tomorrows. Um, and one day, uh, Jesus will come back uh, and we will, he will take us to be with him. Uh, and that is a glorious future that we all have. But we have a future uh, while living on this earth uh, at the moment as well. Do you know, we tend to live uh, for the present, uh, to live for the moment. Um, but can we just begin to be thinking uh, just about our lives, uh, where we are headed, uh, where we are now, but also uh, where we are headed. And if we weren't to change anything in our lives now, where would that take us? Uh, the question is, is there some changes that we need to make in our life? Uh, if you want to change your tomorrow, you have to start with today. If you want to see change in your future, you have to make some changes and decisions today uh, in the present. Uh, the question that I want to ask you today is what are you building your life on? Uh, what are you building your life on? Or maybe who are you building your life on or around? Uh, Jesus told the parable uh, of the wise man and the foolish, one, foolish man. Uh, the wise man built his house on the rock. The foolish man built his house on the sand. Um, and when the storms came, uh, how the, 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 the house built on sand uh, just fell, but yet the man who built his house on the rock uh, was secure and safe. His house stood. Uh, today's message uh, is all about building our lives on the Word of God, building our lives on the promises of God. Uh, and as we do that, 
I believe we will see growth in our lives. Uh, so we're going to read uh, from 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 verses 3 to 4. Uh, if you have a Bible there, why don't you turn to it now? Uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 verses 3 to 4. Uh, The title that I've got above these verses is Growing in Faith. Uh, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And may God bless his word to us uh, today. Uh, Peter uh, has written two letters uh, here, both letters Peter wants to, uh, it says there, stimulate, uh, to encourage, to arouse enthusiasm, to wholesome thinking. Uh, You can read that in in 2 Peter 3 uh, verse 1. He wants to stimulate our thinking. He wants to to encourage us to be enthusiastic about wholesome thinking. Uh, The message uh, says that both letters are reminders to hold our minds in a state of undistracted attention. Undistracted attention. Uh, The Passion Translation uh, describes it this way. I've attempted to stir you up and awaken you to a proper mindset. To a proper mindset. Uh, Do you know, we will live our lives according to what we believe. Um, And and, you know, if we want to see change in our life, we have to change uh, the way that we perceive and believe. Uh, The theme of uh, 2 Peter uh, is growth and maturity. Growth and maturity. Growing uh, in the knowledge of God and living in the knowledge of God. Uh, This isn't just head knowledge, but this is heart knowledge. This is relationship. This is growing in a relationship with God, knowing him uh, more and more, knowing him intimately uh, as he knows us. Uh, And uh, God is, I believe, looking for growth in our life. Uh, And I want to say that if you are not growing, then you are dying then you are dying. If your body is not growing physically, then there is something wrong. Um, And so spiritually, if we are not growing, then there is something uh, not right. Um, And it's something that we need to address. Um, So my question today is, as you look at your life, are you growing? Uh, Think about your life and ask yourself, am I growing? Uh, Sometimes it's difficult, I know, uh, to see in our own life how we are growing and it takes someone else uh, just to share how they have seen growth in our life. Um, But are you growing? If we are not growing, then we are dying. Um, And so growth, this letter that Peter is writing is all about growing. As you read through God's word, as you read through these letters, Uh, you will see uh, Peter talking about growing uh, into a full experience of our salvation, Uh, growing in the grace and the knowledge of God, growing in maturity, as Ephesians uh, talks about, Uh, and 2 Corinthians talks about growing in faith. Um, So God, I believe, uh, wants us to grow uh, and expects us uh, to grow. Uh, The encouragement And the challenge uh, for us is, will we diligently apply ourselves uh, to developing our spiritual lives and growing? Uh, Discovering ways of doing that. Uh, We do that through prayer. We do that through worship. uh, And we do that, as I'm talking about today, living in the promises of God's word. Uh, There is... More good news for us 
God, it says there in verse 3, has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. He has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. And you know, you may be someone who has been thinking, God, I don't know if I can live up uh, to your expectations for my life. I, God, I don't know if I can live according uh, to your word in the way that you want me to. Um, well, let me tell you, don't look at your own life, but look to the promises of God, because God has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. It is through his divine power. It is through his wisdom, not in our own strength and in our own wisdom. Be encouraged. It's through his power. It is through his strength. It is through his divine nature. Uh, we receive all of this by coming to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. We have everything that we need to enable us to live a life of godliness. Do I hear an amen uh, to live out our calling and our purposes in God, to live the life that Jesus has won for us on the cross, on the cross. Uh, God uh, has designed us, I believe, to live a supernatural life, uh, sharing in his divine nature. Uh, and God helps us do that uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. He has given us his Holy Spirit. Uh, Peter, uh, uh, or Jesus in Acts, says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth and to Dundee. Uh, God has given us his power um, to be able to carry out the great commission uh, that he has given us uh, and to live our lives uh, according to God's word. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you are a new creation. Uh, Peter here is encouraging uh, the people here to live in that new life that they have in Christ Jesus, that they are enabled by his promises. Uh, as you'll see in verse 4, uh, these promises, uh, Peter describes them as great uh, that they are precious. Uh, the word uh, precious is a Greek word, timius, uh, which means valuable or costly. Valuable or costly. Uh, so these words, uh, these promises are precious and costly. Uh, Peter loves using uh, that word precious. Uh, I I'm just hearing now... Uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, my precious. Um, so, uh, but Peter loves using this word because you will see in his letters, he talks about precious faith. Uh, he will talk about precious promises, the precious blood, the precious stone, uh, the precious saviour. Uh, and these promises uh, enable us to live in his divine nature. Uh, most times we live... Uh, a lot of times we live it by our human nature. Uh, we live by the flesh. Um, but God wants us to live, the, I believe, that supernatural life by his divine nature in us. Uh, I'm reminded uh, just again of Galatians 2.20, uh, which says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live in the, just the, the, the trust and the faith in Christ Jesus. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Uh, building uh, our lives on God's word, the, the precious promises of God's word, uh, living a fulfilled life the way that God wants us to live, comes from cultivating that new nature within our lives.
the purpose that God wants for our lives is to know him, to know him more, to know him intimately. Uh, it was what Moses was to, to tell Israel uh, what God wanted to do for them, that they would know him. Uh, and as God has saved us, uh, as he is freeing us up, uh, as he is redeeming us, as he has redeemed us, uh, as he has called us to be uh, his children, we are children of the living God. It's our identity. Um, his desire is that we would know him more. Uh, Egypt uh, was a type. Uh, Egypt is a type of our world. Uh, Pharaoh uh, was a type, uh, a type of the, the enemy uh, that sla enslaves us, uh, that we were uh, slaves to sin. But God has brought us out. Uh, he has saved us. Uh, and we are saved by God through the, the cross of Jesus Christ. Um, and God wants to free us up. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Um, and you know, as we have been saved, uh, as we have been uh, called out of Egypt, as it were, um, that God still wants to free us up. Uh, do you know, imagine that God was calling the people out of Egypt, but then he says, I, I, I want to free you. Um, and what God was saying there was that he wanted to get Egypt uh, out of the hearts of his people. They may have been out of Egypt, um, but Egypt was not out of them. Um, and God uh, is doing that in our life. He is working in our lives. Uh, we may uh, be uh, transferred uh, from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of God, but God is still working in getting the kingdom of this world out of our lives. And God is restoring us and he is calling us to be his people. I will bring you out. I will bring you out. Uh, do you know, living our lives in the promises of God, living our lives according to his word uh, and the way that God wants us uh, to do is going to take uh, effort. Uh, it's going to take hard work uh, on our part. It's going to take resilience um, and uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2 verses 12 to 13 uh, says work hard to show the results of your salvation obeying God with deep reverence and fear for God is working in you giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do you know, surrendering to God um, in our life, it's that refining, um, it's that surrendering our life uh, to his processes in our life. Um, and it does, as it says here, uh, take effort, um, as, as the Philippians uh, writer says to work hard to show the results of your salvation. Uh, I, I do think, or, or my question uh, to you uh, today is, are you hungry uh, for God's word? Are you hungry uh, for his word, for the nourishment of his word? Are you thirsty for uh, the Holy Spirit, um, for everything that is godly and pure, uh, God's word and his spirit. Uh, do you know, it says in verse 5 uh, there of our reading today um, about making every effort to respond to God's promises. And so here even Peter is, is asking and encouraging that there should be a response um, to God's promises in our life. Um, and, and here's what it says. Uh, from, I'm just going to read from verse 5 onwards uh, from the message. It says, So don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given, complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness and generous love, each dimension fitting into and developing the other's. 
With these qualities active and growing in our life, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our Master Jesus. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you, oblivious that your old life, old sinful life, has been wiped off the books. Wow. Uh, um, I do think we have to uh, wean ourselves uh, off of the world's junk food that we have been feeding on. That we have been feeding on. Do you know the world's junk food uh, it tastes good, it, it feels good, it, and it satisfies for a short time. Uh, and then we just crave uh, more. Uh, but I want to say, as Jesus says there, uh, just right in, in John 10.10, 10, about a rich and satisfying life, then know today that he is the one that can give you that rich and satisfying life uh, as we feed on the promises and on the nourishment uh, of God's word for our life. Uh, as we close, my encouragement to you uh, today is, will you pursue his promises? Will you look for them and will you build them into your life? Will you get your Bible out, your scriptures, uh, and just l pursue and look for the promises of God um, and just build God's words into your life? Uh, Psalm 119, the psalmist says, I will put my hope in your words and stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. Thinking about your promise. So I believe we have to pursue God's promises. We have to pursue living that righteous and godly life that God desires for us. Uh, and will you declare the promises of God? I would encourage you to declare them when you find them, when you read them in God's word, to declare them out loud uh, over your life and in your life. Um, live by them. Trust them, rest in them and stand on them. Uh, do you know, every Tuesday night as we do our prayer and declaration, there is just power in declaring uh, God's word over our life and our situations. And let's declare the promises of God over our life uh, and over our church uh, because these are truth. Uh, God's word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword that penetrates the dividing soul and spirit joint and marrow, judging our thoughts and our attitudes. All scripture is God-breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. So we do have everything that we need to live our lives for God. So if you have a financial need, you can declare that my God will supply all my need. Uh, if you are needing healing, uh, you can find in God's words the promises, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all my iniquity and heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit. Uh, maybe in times of fear, uh, you can declare, For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power and sound mind. Uh, God's word uh, is what we need for our life. God has given us everything that we need. Uh, and so my encouragement, my challenge is, will we be men and women who will live in the promises of God? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your word. Jesus, you are the word. Today, Father, we ask, Lord, that you would show us. Lord, would you reveal Jesus even more through his word. Father, as we search for your promises. Father, as we endeavour to live out the promises of God for our lives. May we know, Lord, your power through the Holy Spirit. Today, Father, I ask that we would grow in the knowledge of you. Father, for those watching, that they would grow in the knowledge of you and that they would grow more and more in intimacy with you.
the people that know their gods, that, sorry, the people that know their gods will do great exploits. So Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you uh, for uh, joining us today. Uh, and my prayer is that you are blessed by this message. Uh, and always remember uh, that you are blessed to be a blessing.